All right, so now we are ready to get started. And so you can see we have Docker and it's running and I have no containers running. Um, you can also see here I have my learn course open and it's at the course outline. So let's go to our terminal. Now, when you're using Docker, essentially you have this file called a Docker file. And what Docker file does, if we look at it, it goes through all the steps that's required to build this. And so every time you run this, it follows the same steps and it makes your build repeatable. Um, and it's doing a few things. It's copying, uh, well, first it's installing the requirements. It's updating the operating system. And we're using this pre-built uh, Flask with Gunicorn instance. And so then we're installing all of our required files and then we're adding our config and we're exposing port 5000 and then we're saying the entry point is to run as uh, run with this information and this is the file with the WSGI which if we look under app you can see we have WSGI.py and then if we were to look in this you would see that it's importing the app object and so basically it's saying start up uh, start up that way and so that means every time that I build this and run it it's going to follow the same pattern. Now with Docker what happens is basically every line that is in this Docker file creates a new instance. So we're layering on top of this pre-built instance that we're using. And so the first time you run it, it will have to run through all of these including downloading the, uh, the file that we're using as our base. And then every time we do one of these steps it will layer a new uh, instance on top of this base instance and uh, it will generate it that way and then it will delete it as it creates the next one and what you'll end up with is a single instance that is built on layers all the through all of this process now what makes this fantastic is that once you've run it everything is cached and so you only have to rebuild it uh, when you rebuild it it only has to do the new things that you've added so if the only thing that's changed is your config or the only thing that's changed is the port that you're running on, all of this stuff will be built from cache and it's super quick and it's it's repeatable and keeps your environment stable. So to do this, um, we basically just need to run a couple of commands. And so the first one we're going to run is docker build. We're going to say minus T that sets a tag that we can then use to refer to this rather than having to remember a giant hexadecimal string. And we'll just call it UEF tutorial version 0 0.1. Oh, and I forgot something. So um, the last thing you have to do is you have to tell it where the Docker file is that you are going to be using. And so uh, basically, as long as you're running with Dockerfile in the same directory, you just give it a period. And so now you can see it has downloaded. Uh, in this case, I already had this instant, this image on my computer. I ran the app git update to update all of the uh, operating system. Of course, I've already done that before, and so that was done from cache as well. It's doing my pip install upgrade to make sure I'm on the last pip. It's adding my requirements file to the image and then running pip install on that requirements file. It's copying the app directory into an app directory in my Docker image called app. It is then adding the config file that says how to start up. It's exposing port 5000 and then it's defining the entry point. And so now I have an image called UEF-Tutorial uh, version 0.1. So the next thing we have to do is we have to go ahead and run it. So again, we're going to do Docker. And since we're going to run it, we are going to say run. And then we need to specify some ports. Uh, so basically what we're saying is open port 5000 in the container and map it to 5000 on my host machine. We're going to say dash dash name so that it shows up with a defined name in our Docker desktop. Otherwise, it generates a fun unique name but makes it hard to keep track and we will just call it uh, UEF tutorial and then we have to specify the image that we want to run and 
since we uh, have given this our tag, we're going to specify the tag and click enter. And now this is running. So first let's look at Docker Desktop. You can see we now have UEF tutorial. I could click this to go to a command prompt within my container. Um, I can click on it to see logs and inspect the settings that have been defined. Uh, I can even get stats about the usage and all that fun stuff. But what we really want to do is see what happens to make sure this is running. So we're going to open in the browser and you can see localhost 5000. So this is running from Docker. You can see 5000. Now to prove that ngrok is doing what it's supposed to do, let's go back and get our ngrok link and I'm going to go ahead and command click and you can see I get the same thing localhost 5000 or this publicly accessible URL. If you were to load this URL in your browser right now as I am running this this video you would be able to see this exact same thing in your browser as well. So now that we're running um, we'll go ahead and close these and let's go back into our course and so I have uh, already registered this as an LTI tool so I'm just going to go ahead and go to the content market and I am going to add the UEF LTI hello world and we now have it here I'll make it visible to attendees and now I can go ahead and click this and what you will see is that it makes the LTI launch and now I have my hello world Welcome to the Ultra Extension Framework Python demo. So there you have it. We have gone through all the steps to get started and, and prepared for our tutorial. We have our LTI tool that we will be converting, running on our desktop. And the next step is uh, to go ahead and get started with our tutorial.